discuss the uh, issue with the accountability with crowd account uh, cloud accountability in the previous session and in this session uh, we see some of the preventive techniques uh, that used across the uh, cloud environment across the cloud domain and those uh, and those strategies are either the state of the art academic standards or or the industry standards uh, that has been published uh, in reputed journals or uh, with the reputed conferences uh, with various authors okay so let's start them one by one okay and meanwhile if you have any a doubt in the previous session you can ask me even in this session also in the last 15 minute of this session okay so the first strategy is accountability on service level agreements as we have seen that there are various ways uh, through which uh, there will be a violation of service level, level agreement so now we are going to see that once that uh, violation is happened through the responsibilities or the accountabilities over the cloud service provider user or adversary or any person who is held accountable for the incidents So in, uh, in this strategy of accountability, uh, there is an algorithm which provide you an audit facility. There is an er uh, algorithm which is an audit procedure which is represented as A. And in that audit procedure, in that audit procedure this audit will perform tracing over and service s over a time stamp or uh, between a time stamp t1 to t2 so the symbols used here or A for audit, S for service, and then T1 and T2. That is the duration of the time in which you are performing an audit for a service S. Okay. So the main uh, purpose of this particular audit is that if there is no fault or there is no degradation of the service between the time stamp t1 and t2 the audit will return okay or maybe the qs has been met or sla has been met a kind of uh, return message otherwise this audit service will provide you a verifiable evidence that is important a verifiable evidence to expose the responsibility of the party okay so let's discuss the building block of this method okay so the first thing that it will provide it will provide a temper proof evident of logs a temper proof evidence of log logs that record all the history actions of an application so whenever an application is executing over a virtual machine so all the states of that application means what are the time duration in which that application is executing how many times a new connection has been created between uh, that application and some outside application or within that cloud application then what kind of modification update alteration updation services has been provided okay using that using the software so all those logs are recorded and maintained 
and the point here that is added is that the log is temper proof evidence the log is temper proof evidence that even if the cloud service provider is try to alter the logs even he cannot do that and either any adversary or the client or the client which software is running over the virtual machine even he is uh, try to uh, alter the log or try to some uh, kind of modification in the log he cannot provide it so that is why the log is temper proof okay the next point in performing audit is virtualization based replace that can audit the action of application by replaying their logs so the point here is that the machine the physical machine is shared between multiple virtual machines okay so you are storing or you are targeting a single virtual machine or maybe multiple virtual machine over a single physical machine but when you are recording the log at the same time and at the same time you are also recording the logs for other machines also okay so all these logs are temper proof so that they will provide you an opportunity to perform the replays of all the operations that performs over t1 to t2 in this way even even the incidents happen because of some other virtual machine that could be detected clear to everyone the next point time stamping okay so the trusted time stamping that can be used Detect performance fault that is the latency or the throughput that not matches with the service level agreement. Okay. So the third point says that in the first two points you have tried to find out the culprit machine or the culprit virtual machine through which which is. Uh, which is performing some malicious activity in the third point let that malicious activity happens in the cloud environment the activity happens in the cloud environment means a attack has been successfully launched so the next point is now the audit will try to capture the amount of time the amount of time the attack hinders the performance of a service or degrades the performance of the service okay finally it is not possible to perform or create a temper proof log and also perform the replays of all the operations whenever you are performing in the an audit so rather than performing an audit for all the virtual machines which are executing in a physical machine it's better to perform sampling okay so no audit is performed for 100% of operations the audits always perform for a sample of operation for a sample of machine so out of 100 a sampling may be performed for 20 or 30 or 40% of uh, virtual machine operations and the operations or the softwares which are executing on those VMs. Okay, so using the sampling that provides you probability guarantees that provide you probability guarantee and in from that probability guarantee the responsibilities are fixed over the cloud service provider or the cloud user or an adversary or the simultaneously executing virtual machines by some other users guys uh, are you able to understand this point the accounting on service level agreement i hope so okay <clears throat> so let's move forward and try to see uh, a new defense strategy which try to encounter 
or try to capture the accountability issue so the next next strategy is accountable virtual machine the next point is accountable virtual machine which also uh, in short form presented as avms accountable virtual machine so the word accountable is suffixed in the virtual machine it enables users to audit it enables users to perform an audit of the software software is executing on these virtual machines on a remote machine means on the means in a cloud environment multiple vms are executing and they are all executing in a third party environment and it's provide an user a procedure a step an algorithm to perform audit over these vms so whenever they perform an audit they try to detect the fault then they will identify the faulty nodes and also provide verifiable evidence for a particular fault and the point of responsible party okay so the point is that the intent of avm is to enable users to audit the software execution on the cloud service providers premises and the avm is able to detect faults means if there is a bug in the software logic if there is a bug in the software logic or or the fault happen accidentally all or the fault happens exit accidentally all the fault is induced by the cloud service provider okay so and if that fault is happen incidentally or due to some hardware failure so let's identify the faulty node another thing while doing such kind of operation it also provide you the verifiable particular node and point of responsible party further avm is applicable to cloud computing in which customers outsource their data and application on the cloud server i have discussed multiple times that cloud service provider and the client have mistrust over it they don't have trust over it so the avm allows the cloud user to verify the correctness of their code in the cloud system avms allow the cloud users to verify the correctness of their code in the cloud system okay the approach is to wrap any running software in the virtual machine which keeps, which keeps a temper evident log which keeps a temper evident logs to record the entire execution of software so now you are able to see that whenever a software is executing over a virtual machine over a virtual machine the entire trail of that execution that entire trail of that execution is recorded okay then if we assume there is a reference implementation which defines okay so this uh, this particular thing is for checking the correctness of the result if we assume that there is a reference implementation which defines the correct execution of the software so the cloud user have enough information to verify the software uh, guys uh, please switch off your uh, uh, mics 
okay uh, it is creating uh, uh, disturbance in the session oh yes sir i have muted everyone once again Okay. We can go. Okay. So again, if we are assuming any reference implementation, means the reference implementation means the correct execution or the correct output of a software or a desired output of a software. Okay. So the cloud user have enough information to verify the software correctness by replaying the log files. and comparing it with the reference copy if there is any inconsistency or mismatch between the reference copy and the output produce uh, and the output produced by the software when it is executing in the real time in the real time the mismatch is detected the log the log during which since we are also capturing the log is a tamper proof evident meaning that nobody is able to tamper with the log file without being de detected okay so once the integrity of the log is ensured because nobody is able to uh, alter or change that tamper proof log file so once the integrity of log file is ensured the evidence obtained from those logs are trustworthy the evidence obtained from these logs are trustworthy and by using this technique we are successfully able to able to make a person responsible for this incidents okay guys so if you are properly hearing my points one by one you may be a question arises that the cloud is recording the cloud is recording each and every activity of a software okay a cloud service provider is recording all the activity or most of the activities of the software so that is also another kind of privacy challenge that is another kind of privacy challenge using such kind of silent uh, recording of the uses of a particular software a client is a, a cloud service provider is able to capture the data or even record the data even the if even if the data is stored in encrypted form in the cloud premises so although such kind of strategies are implemented but they are not practically useful in the industry standard so these kind of things are for academic purpose or for research purpose and maybe after some time we will reach to a particular strategy which is implementable even in the real world scenarios okay so let's discuss about another technique which is known as collaborative monitoring so collaborative monitoring is also a very similar kind of technique as avms as avms this method is similar to the avm strategy so what this method do in the previous method as you see the audit is done by the the audit is done by the virtual machines itself while in this method an external state machine an external external state machine is fixed and it's his job to perform the monitoring services it is his job to perform the validate it his job to perform the validation of the correctness of data and the execution of business logic in the multi tenancy environment okay so in the avm strategy what you had seen that there are multiple vms executing on the physical machine and and the avms since they are now accountable avms 
it's their work it's their responsibility to also make the trail and trace and logs of each and every activities now for that particular job since that is also an overhead over the vms now what you have done you have assigned or appoint a point a monitoring service now that monitoring service is performing the validation of the correctness of data and the execution in the cloud environment okay and finally the same kind of objective here is also to detect the fault to identify the faulty node the verifiable evidence for a fault so that the responsible party must be held okay so further that it is assumed that the data it is assumed that the data may only be accessed through the endpoints that are specified according to the sla between the cloud service provider and the user okay that is the data has been traveling or the data has been traversing between the cloud service provider and the user and that is accessed only through the endpoints it is not possible for the user that it has initiated some programs and try to access that data that is not possible okay until unless he is try to access using the endpoints of that those data so the endpoints are the point it is provided in each service uh, in each cloud service provider and those endpoints are named with different names in different cloud service provider if you use the aws cloud computing they are known as arn arn numbers okay so whenever you are initiating any uh, service whether it's an ec2 whether it's a s3 or any service it have associated arn and this arn provides you the endpoint facility so why such kind of endpoint facilities is possible because it is not, not always that you are assessing a cloud service that you are assessing a cloud service using using the their web page or their console most of the time the cloud services are accessed using some or other kind of programming okay means some or other kind of application so at that time these endpoint or these access points are required to access the services further the basic idea is to wrap each endpoint the basic idea is to wrap each endpoint with an adapter that is able to capture the input and output of the endpoint and record all the operations performed through the endpoint and record all the operations perform through the endpoints means since we are performing or wrapping over the endpoints and that endpoint is a communication channel between a cloud user and the cloud service provider and since we are performing a wrapping means there is a program on these endpoints on these endpoints which is capturing each and everything or recording each and everything which is passing through this endpoints and further once the log has been maintained that log is sent for the purpose of that log is sent to the external agent or to the machine which is performing the monitoring service to perform the authentication operation 
perform the authentication operation in this way this strategy has implemented okay let's uh, move towards a new strategy which is known as accountable map reduce okay so as we have seen in uh, the previous discussion uh, guys till now uh, i hope you are able to understand each and everything any doubt you can ask me okay or write uh, in the comment box i will respond to that further the accountable map reduce as we have seen the this trusted map reduce or or uh, something named for the map reduce so the particular problem or this problem is addressed using a strategy which is known as secure map reduce which is known as secure map reduce which adopts full task duplication to check the processing result it performs full task duplication to check the result so secure map reduce requires that each task is executing two times each task is executing two times and then the result produced during this process is compared and at that basis you are finding out okay particular result is verified and correct okay so an auditor so an auditor makes use of determinism of map reduce functions in order to apply an accountable test in order to apply an accountable test for each task on each working machine so for task that has been that has been completed picks up a task that has completed by in m and re executes compares the output with the machine an inconsistency of so then m is proved to be the malicious so the test the accountability test will stop well when all tasks are tested when so in okay, there is the issue with this method that it is perform a full duplication of the execution of all the tasks which happen over this map reduce uh, node okay means it is duplicating all the execution application have a large overhead if you are using a cloud service so you are taking a rented service just because execute it and it's the responsibility of the cloud service provider to provide you a trusted computing facility it is not like you are taking an other software which performs another times of execution then compared the other such kind of things happen you can understand the kind of overhead which you have to pay for verifying the result so the another strategy is that in a steed of pursuit that is in a steed of performing a 100% detection rate a 100% detection rate means you are performing a duplication of computation for all the tasks for all the tasks a suggestion has been given that rather than performing duplication of the task 
why not perform sampling of the task means you take some samples of the task and then perform only the repetition or the duplication for those tasks and based on the probability and strategy based on the probability and strategy you are able to you are able to achieve still the high detection rate for a faulty notes let's say you are able to detect still 99 percent of accuracy or detection rate of a faulty node even with a comparatively very low overhead comparatively very low overhead rather than duplicating all the tasks are you getting my point for accountable map reduce for accountable map reduce so further there is another strategy which is known as secure provenance so in the secure provenance what this particular method say the secure provenance is essential to improve the data forensic and accountability in the cloud system so secure provenance is introduced with an aim to ensure that to ensure that verifiable evidence might be provided to trace the real data owner and the record of the data modification so that was the purpose of secure provenance and secure provenance method is based on cryptographic techniques secure provenance method is based on based on cryptographic technique based on bilinear pairing technique maybe some of uh, you may be heard about the bilinear technique i am not going into the complexity of the bilinear technique i am just discuss the step how you can perform a secure provenance to perform to provide the defense against the accountability breach okay so consider a file stored in a cloud environment and when there is a dispute on the file the cloud can provide all the information means all the provenance information with ability to plot all versions of file means if there is a software means a software is executing in ec2 and the output file is stored in s3 means uh, simple storage system and during the course of execution of that software that file has been updated and modified multiple times so if we if you see the s3 service you are able to see that all the modification with the time stamped is stored in the aws cloud system so in this way in this way this strategy have all the versions of the file okay and all the user who have performed these modica modification even those account information so with these information it is possible to specify the user who has performed such kind of operation so if an alteration has performed without authorized access that can be tracked easily using the secure provenance method okay guys so let's uh, move towards the our last strategy the last defense strategy uh, in the accountability then we uh, complete uh, this entire discussion over the confidentiality integrity availability and accountability and after that we will move towards a new method or a new technique in a cloud where the task or the challenges the task or challenges that 
you are performing a computation you are performing a computation over a data which is in encrypted domain that is known as secure computation okay so first uh, discuss it then we will move towards a new topic so this particular uh, defense strategy is named as verifiable resource accounting verifiable resource accounting so in the verifiable resource accounting this methods provides assurance to the cloud user that the application which is executing on the cloud platform is charged is charged for the exact amount which is it consuming on the cloud platform further the consumption was justified based on an agreed policy means based on an sla document the scheme considers three roles the customer c the provider or the cloud service provider p and the verifier v first the customer asks to the cloud service provider to run a task t to run a task t a customer ask the cloud service provider to run a task p then the cloud service provider generates a report r describing the resources p thinks that this cloud service user consumes during the execution okay then then the cloud service user the cloud service user sends the report r and some additional verifiable data v who checks whether all is the valid consumption report so it is kind of electricity bill okay so how a person come to your house and takes the meter reading and meter reading is the exact accounting of the billing or exact accounting of the electricity consumption that your home appliances has done in your house the point here is that the entire electricity consumption the entire process of electricity consumption is very easy means all the appliances that is running in your house they are consuming the electricity and based on their power consumption in watt per hour that meter is performing the accounting service that meter is performing the accounting service it is not like that the same power connection is shared between multiple users the same power connection is shared between multiple users let's say a power connection which falls into your house means the first connection is in house and the meter is installed in your house after that you have distributed multiple connections from your house mean you are, you are sharing your electricity resource with multiple other users and all the consumption which is uh, all the consumption uh, consumption of electricity happen which you have shared with multiple users is accounted in your meter can you tell me any strategy without installing individual meters at the user end that you can identify that what is the amount of electricity consumed by the different user that you have shared your electricity so that is the challenge that is the kind of challenge happen here also okay so by implementing a trusted hardware layer by implementing a trusted hardware layer 
with other existing technologies such as offloading, monitoring, sampling, and snapshot, it is ensured that the provider that does not overcharge or undercharge a cloud service user, and also the provider correctly assigns assign the consumption of resources to the to the person response responsible for using those resources to the person responsible for using those resources okay guys so in this way in this way you are able to understand uh, kind of threats that a cloud the kind of threats to the cloud accountability as we have discussed all the threats then the defense strategy okay so that is all about cloud confidentiality integrity availability and accountability issues as we have seen as we have seen different kinds of vulnerabilities in this model in the cloud environment and due to those vulnerabilities what kind of threat perception so we have seen and explored and then discussed the various kind of threats in the confidentiality integrity availability and accountability and also then we had discussed the state of the art defense strategies to encounter such kind of threats or the privacy concerns guys if you have any doubt or uh, any question regarding these strategies the threat models or anything you can ask me so that's all from my side uh, on these topics Participants can share their uh, questions on the chat window. Any question, any doubt? Uh, so I don't think there are any questions uh, so far. Okay. So guys, uh, for hands-on session, uh, we will again meet uh, on... Uh, uh, Sikha, it is okay to we meet on uh, 3 p.m.? Uh, that is fine, sir, if the participants are fine with it. Yeah, like uh, usually the session is start at 2.30. So uh, today the session will be start at 3. Okay. Oh, I so hope uh, it is comfortable for everyone. So will we be extending it uh, beyond uh, the time? Uh, is, it was from 2.30 to 4, right? Uh, yeah, 2.30 to 4. Yeah, uh, no, like we...